In my previous video, I talked about the towards the end of the video the impending implosion, which seems uh, nigh inevitable. And uh, I was watching one of fairly recent, I don't know if it's the most recent, I have to double check, videos of Girl Writes What about the Fempocalypse. Essentially that well, society will indeed implode and we will have feminism and the consequences of feminism to thank for it. Uh, <clears throat> I was a bit disappointed to a certain extent with the video because I, I asked, I sent, I made a comment, I didn't receive, uh, I have an, I didn't get an answer yet, but uh, I expect her at some point in time to answer that. And I'm making this video response, I don't want to put words in her mouth, but um, I wanted to address this whole idea of uh, the good old days, or you know, going back to the to the the way it was, as it were. You know, people talk about this very often. I think, in particular, social conservatives, and I'm not a social conservative politically. Um, as I said, I'm pretty much a libertarian. But this idea that the good old days, at some point in time, when say the man was the master of the house and what have you. Those were, in fact, the good old days, and, and men had it good. <clears throat> well, I'd, I'd beg to, to differ. I don't think it's po certainly, uh, ostensibly at least, from what we can gather from the past, uh, men were accorded more respect than as uh, quote-unquote patriarchs of their household. They were given more respect than they are now. That's not very... That's not saying much, of course, but um, if you look at the actual position of the mass of men, I'm not talking about aristocracy or nobility, but the masses of men, say, in the 19th century or even the Middle Ages, uh, most men have been, throughout the ages, cheap or viewed, and of course it's been uh, put into practice, they've been a utility, they've been viewed as cheap, expendable labor. That has been the role of man throughout throughout known history and beyond known history, beyond written history. There's archaeological evidence for this as well. Um, so the notion of the good old days, as tempting as it, as it is to fall for that, uh, is a bit of a, a, a misnomer, and I think it's fallacious. Um, a yearning for some sort of utopic past that never was, and, you know, that's that's okay in the sense that humanity suffers from this. We we've all had this, uh, people. The uh, eighth century, late eighth century uh, Greek poet and writer Hesiod wrote uh, famously wrote the Theogony. He in in, in it um, might be works and days. My, my reference might be slightly off. He wrote two major works. He, he talks about a progression of, say, gold, of, of the golden age, uh, uses metals as a reference, then to the silver, then to bronze, and so on and so forth. So there's always been this yearning for a, a, a greater past. Um, without uh, the Garden of Eden, of course, depending on your religious position, it is, of course, a metaphor for the, the good old days as well. And um, it's very tempting to fall for the idea of the good old days of, of for men. But the fact is, <clears throat> if the days were indeed so good when the man was the quote-unquote master of his household, when he was uh, allegedly accorded respect, why was he sent down the mine shaft to die? And why did why did, what, did he die? Why did multiple men, many men, die in on mass in such situa situations? Um, men, as I said, have always been cheap labor. They've been sent off to die in wars for tyrants in the past, uh, monarchs, um, various magnates who thought it was their right to do, to do so, to send these men to their deaths. Um, and no doubt in the past there was uh, much trumpeting of propagandistic um, patriotic bullshit that accompanied the sending of the men to their deaths, as it is the case these days with regards to unjust wars and uh, the nonsense, uh, nonsense of that matter. Only in the 20th and 20th, 21st centuries, it was mostly states. States comprised of, well, composed of several um, modern monarchs who do the same thing. 
make no mistake, um, we, we can see the same thing happening today. I don't talk about it much, but I am a libertarian, and I think war should only be waged if absolutely necessary, and none of the wars we're engaged in are necessary. We are killing people over there that had nothing to do with anything, that wasn't, it wasn't relevant, and we're sending our own countrymen to die for... Uh, well, essentially the military-industrial complex, and that's pretty fucked up. But the worst, the worst thing about it is we, we send them to death on the, the false notion that they're they're doing something uh, magnificent, and just, and they're they're acting as quote unquote patriots for their country, when in fact they are cheap, expendable labor. Uh, they're sent off to die, not necessarily to die, but they could well die. But um, they are grunts, and this has been the lot of most men throughout the ages. Yes, some, some men have risen above this, and some men uh, were born into positions that were far above the lot of a grunt, of a worker drone. But to yearn for a past that never was is uh, a bit dangerous. But even if we were to grant this past some level of credence and say, well, yeah, we did have it better. Back in the days, a man was the head of his household, and a woman granted him respect and what have you. Um, there's a much more salient point, point that needs to be made, and that point is simply that even if it were, had been the case, there's no going back. There's no going back to the old ways. It's done. Society, whether we like it or not, and I don't, so I don't mean just Western society. Look at South Korea, as I talked about recently. Look at the herbivore men. I mean, Japanese, Japanese social and infra, social structure and infrastructure is falling apart, and it's, it's alarming to people over there. All over the world, in most industrialized modern countries, um, the fat lady has sung, as I said, there is no going back. There have been changes brought about in Iraq that simply are, are irrevocable. You, you, we, we cannot go back to the point where even if it had been a, some sort of glorious utopian situation for the male in society, where we say, oh, you know, we're just going to go back to the good old days. Um, another point, of course, is uh, I'm going to link to the video, Barbarossa's video about um, commensurate compensation, if the, if the homemaker role actually is a... Hmm, a, a commensurate, an equal way of uh, compensating a hard-working man. He arrives at the conclusion that it's not, and I would agree with him. The fact is that society has been changed so much, to such a large extent, by feminism and by its byproducts, and through, yes, social media and man manipulative forces that seep into the psyches of uh, both men and women, but of course women are the ones who um, who carry the disease to a far greater extent, and um, the manifestations of the malady are far, are simply far greater in, in womankind, and they are the ones who propagate it and spread it. And that is why society has sunk so far. There is no going back. Um, I was concerned, as I said in this about this video that girl writes what made. That there's this notion she speaks several times on the issue of men paying more taxes, men contributing, you know, their their finances to a greater extent than women to uh, to society, to the state. I I wish she would clarify that a bit more, but. Um, Men who are going their own way, um, we are individuals, and we, I believe I am, and the rest of you are as well, and we, we will enter into associations with people and befriend people, but I don't see it a, our, our role as that of um, maintain, to be quite frank, to be quite honest, maintaining uh, the infrastructure of society. Society has spat on us, has shat on us, and because of that, we have turned our back on that model. Um, we've turned our back on the model of the worker drone, and 
I, as I said, even if, if it had been uh, some glorious period of time when, when men ruled the house, which I doubt, um, we have all the evidence that men, despite that, that throughout the ages, uh, men were cheap, expendable labor. Why on earth would any cognizant, mentally mature man who's arrived at the conclusions that he has regarding his lot and status in life want to return to anything resembling that? So his wife would suck his dick uh, promptly when he returned home? I mean, is that really worth it? I think not. So he gets, gets laid on command? Not even that's worth it. Um, because the most important thing we have something that probably is more a, a almost something ethereal this, because it doesn't really exist in any sort of concrete form is this con concept of liberty and freedom that is to say that we as individuals value and cherish our freedom liberty our mobility um, both mentally and, and, and physically in the world more than we do shackling ourselves to an antiquated uh, structure, notion that, that really has no currency anymore. Um, it has no currency anymore because it's not going to work. That's the most important point and issue. We cannot go back. Um, it's, it's like saying, well, it's a poor analogy, but we have this massive obesity problem in Western civilization. It's like saying, well, let's have people all do farm work manually again. That, that way they'll burn more calories. Well, that might be true, but there's no going back to that despite that. So I don't see the role of, of, of men to, um, to safeguard society against the destruction that has been wrought by, by female kind, by feminists, and by their assorted male servants who think they're either doing something good or just in on it or just in, in it for themselves um, qui bono you know whose benefit that's my take on that I, I um, that might, that might this, this position I have might disappoint a lot of people but uh I, I, I just don't think that good old days were that good, to be quite honest. Um, yes, there probably was a modicum of modicum more respect accorded to men than now because we don't get any. But um, one thing is clear. One thing is clear, and one thing is clear on in Girl Rights What's video. We, we are heading for an, an implosion, an apocalypse, if you want to call it that, and be dramatic. Um, it's unsustainable, and we see it in Japan, and we see it in the myriad responses of viewers on YouTube, and we, as I said, we see it in Korea, to such a more limited extent, in the manifestations of their reactions to a uh, stifling uh, social contract that is forced upon them their entire lives. Um, and yes, regarding the social contract, um, there seems to be some implication in Girl Rights What's last video that there is in fact a social contract, that th there is some sort of obligation of, of men assuming society or womankind or whoever these powers that, might, that, that, that are, that be, were to give us a bit more support and be a bit more kinder and more helpful that that, that is our social contract to pay into the state to make sure society keeps on running. I don't see it that way. Let, let society collapse. This is pretty radical. But the fact is that if, if, if we acquiesce to, to a feigned kindness or to a feigned handout or to, to any sort of illusion, remember, Mistrust, distrust is the default position. Simply so people can keep on having their cake and eat it too, that's a bad path. We don't want to go down that path. We, we want to move beyond that. And much as the phoenix of mythology rose from the ashes, something new must arise. But that newly arisen thing, creature, whatever you want to call it, must arise from the ashes of destruction, just as the phoenix had done so. 
there, there must be a purging. And by purging, I don't mean mass death, but certainly a, a death of social, certain social expectations, constructions, um, and social structures. If we don't have that, that purging, which, which will lead to an immolation and, and, and destruction of society and incineration, Yes, after that, something can arise from that. But we, we are not here, in my opinion, my humble opinion, to keep the cogs going. We're, we're, not, we're not here to... I mean, essentially, the analogy I would make is uh, you have a tired and, and worn out and uh, overworked working horse. We are that working horse. And people who would suggest we either return to the old ways or uh, that we'd be given some incentive so that we might uh, return to some worker drone model, think of it this way. The, the, the carrot or whatever vegetable you, of your choosing, and with the carrot that's dangled in front of the draft horse in a vain attempt to keep the draft horse prodding on, um, even though the draft horse is uh, overworked, tired and probably doesn't have a whole lot more energy. Um, yes, there will be some horses that go for the carrot, but this horse is not going to do it, and I think many of my viewers won't, and uh, I think most men are a bit too smart for that. Um, carrot is not enough. It really isn't. And we need to move beyond the, the carrot being dangled in front of our noses uh, as a means, as a possible means of returning to the fold. Because the fold isn't that pleasant and never was. Cheap, expendable labor, that is what we have always been, and that is what we continue to be. Only even less so. We, we don't even have this modicum of respect accorded to us in, some, in a familial environment. Whether or not that, that balanced it all out, well, it probably didn't. In fact, I'm almost certain it didn't, but that aside. On a final note, um, Barbara Russell made a comment in my last video, and I, I want to address that briefly. Yes, I do think eventually there will be splinter communities of men in the world. We, we will form communities, and we'll pool our talents together, and we will thrive and prosper. Um, inevitably, the female parasite will be attracted to that and try to get in. But I think men, by that point in time, whenever that happens, will uh, be cognizant enough and aware of these things that they will be on guard. Um, let's face it, uh, the addiction to the vaginal orifice and the female will not go away anytime soon. Um, the only thing we have are our wits and our knowledge of female nature. So these communities could very well exist, I think it's very likely, but it's going to take a while. But even so, if you want to look at the YouTube community, men going their own way, MRAs, well, look at Japan and the herbivore men. Of a sort, that forms a, a pocket bubble community within a larger, uh, larger community, a more sort of standard accepted community, socially, socially accepted community. So you have that. You do have these communities. They do exist. People who reject certain tenets, who don't, who don't want to bow down to expectations placed on them that are, that are wholly unjust. Um, yeah, that, 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 that is happening, and it will happen. And when, when it does happen in a much more sort of profuse, uh, concrete manner, where you actually have real communities of men pooling, befriending each other and pooling their talents and resources together, by, that, by the time that happens, that might co well coincide with the implosion I spoke of, with the bus driving off the cliff. Um, and my, my, the only thing I can say to feminists and women and people who, and men, or men who collaborate is that the following. When you look upon the blighted landscape that you've created, and the desolation that you have wrought. Do not look to the horizon. Do not look to men. Do not look to those who have detached themselves. Look to yourselves. That's where you'll find the answers. 
Look to your actions. By their deeds you shall know them, and by your own deeds you shall know yourself. Thanks for watching.